All right, so in the last video, we defined a Markov chain. And remember, there were two properties. Uh, there must be a finite number of states in the system. And the transition probability, the probability of going from one state to the next, doesn't depend on where you were before, only where you are now. Any process that has those two properties can be represented by a Markov chain. And so we're going to now look at how we can describe that mathematically. OK, so the first thing to note is that uh, if you have n states uh, at, uh, in a system, then in order to describe all the probabilities, you can use a matrix called a transition matrix. If we have n states, uh, and think of uh, the n columns as the original states or the current states, and there's n possibilities, then that must mean you also have n possible destinations for the next state. So if we can describe the probabilities of going from any of the possible current states to any possible next state, then we will have fully described all the different things that could happen. Uh, and so we can define the quantity pij. So the entry in row i and column j of this matrix to be the probability that I started in state j and I transition to state i. Okay, So the column is, the, again, the, the starting state, the current state, uh, and then the row is going to be the new state. All right. If I can set up this matrix, then I've described the probabilities for any possible outcome. And one, prob uh, one property that this matrix must have is that each column must sum to 1. And that's because given what the uh, once you've specified the current state, which means specifying a column, well, I have to go somewhere, one of the n choices. And so if I add up the probabilities of all of the n choices, I've got to get 1, since that's certain. OK. So a transition matrix, I'll often use the letter A to denote that. Uh, it fully describes all the different probabilistic information for this process. Uh, and in order to describe how a system evolves, we need a couple of things. We first of all need to know the state vector. Uh, and it's a vector where each component represents uh, the probability that the system is in the ith state at step n. Uh, and in other words, uh, this is ve a vector where the entries have to sum to 1. Since when you specify the state of the system, well, you have to again have be in one of the end states. So the sum of all of the components, again, must be 1. All right, so we need a state vector. And typically, we'll use a column vector for this. Uh, you also need to have uh, an evolution equation. Uh, and the way this works is if I want to know, if I know my current state, then the probability for the next state is going to be given by, let, let's say my current state is. Uh, I'm in state 1. Well, I could represent that by saying my state is 1, 0, 0. OK? Uh, the probability that I'm in state 1 is 1, so I'm definitely there. And the probability that I'm in any other state is 0. If I wanted to find the probability that I go to the next state, then I could look at my transition matrix. And I would see that the first column has the probabilities of going from state 1 to any other state. So if we multiply our state vector by the transition matrix, what we'll get is the probability. Uh, it'll just pick out the first column in this case. Uh, and it will give me the probability for the next state is just p11, p21, p22, uh, p31, and so on down the line. So Given the, the state vector, multiplying by the matrix, A gives me a new state vector, which describes the new probabilities for the next state. Now, that looks just like a difference equation, and it is. Uh, the only difference is, rather than thinking about the components of the state vector as deterministic quantities, like the number of cars in a location, we can now think of them as probabilities. And we know that in order to describe a difference equation, we also need an initial condition. And so the initial state uh, is just a vector representing time 0. And uh, 
typically one of the components is one if we indeed know the initial state. Uh, so in this case, I've set the first component to one, meaning I'm definitely in state one. And if we'd started in state two, the, the vector would look like zero, one, with a bunch of zeros after that. All right, uh, and often, like uh, the distant difference equations we looked at previously, we're going to be interested in the long-term behavior of a system, uh, and be, that's going to give us sort of the probability distribution for uh, where do we think the system is going to be at some future point in time. Okay, so that's the, the basic setup for the model. Uh, let's actually look at our uh, an example to see how this all works. So previously, uh, we looked at this rental car model where we had the probability that a car that starts in Orlando stays in Orlando on the next day it was 0.6 uh, and then it was 0.4 that a car will uh, move to Tampa and from Tampa there was a 70% chance that they the chance that they stayed and a 30% chance that it would go to Orlando uh, and we set up a model for keeping track of the number of cars uh, but what we didn't really realize we were thinking about that deterministically we thought of those as percentages 60% stay 70% stay things like that but in reality we can also also think about this uh, as a probabilistic process where uh, the model uh, this matrix is a transition matrix notice that the columns do sum to one so it does have that property uh, that we discussed in the earlier slide uh, and so and also there are almost all the entries in the matrix are between 0 and 1 so they are valid probabilities and so therefore given an initial state we can think of this as a Markov chain if the car starts in Orlando then we would say the initial state is just 1 0 if our car starts in Tampa then our initial condition would be 0 1 And by multiplying uh, by the matrix A, we can find the probabilities for the next state and the state after that. All right, so let's actually work this out. Suppose a vehicle starts in Orlando. What's the probability distribution after n steps? Uh, so we'll do a couple of cases actually by hand, uh, and then we'll do the uh, general formula after that. So let me remind you, the transition matrix was 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0 0.7. And so if the vehicle starts in Orlando, then our initial state is just 1, 0. The probability that we're in Orlando is 1. The probability that we're in Tampa is 0. Uh, and x1 is going to be the probability uh, that I go from state 1 to state 1, so from Orlando to Orlando, and then the probability that I go from Orlando to Tampa, which is given by a. times the initial state. And notice if we do our matrix multiplication, we'll get 0 0.60 uh, and then 0.4 plus 0, which is 0.6.4. So if the car starts in Orlando, there's a 60% chance that he stays in Orlando and a 40% chance that he goes to Tampa. And that makes complete sense. But if I want to then find the solution at the next point in time, the power of the Markov chain is that I just need to multiply by the matrix again. So I'll take 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.7. I will multiply by my state vector at time 1, which is 0 0.6, 0 0.4. And again, since this has all the transition probabilities, I'm count counting for all possible outcomes. And multiplying together, we'll have 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.4. And in the second row, we'll have 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.7 times 0 0.4, which is going to be equal to, let's see, 0.36 plus 0.12, so 0.48, and 0.24 plus 0.28, so 0.52 which means after two days, two steps, uh, there's a 48% chance that the car is still in Orlando uh, or, or ends up in Orlando at that point, and then there's a 52% chance that the car ends up in Tampa. And we could continue that process, but notice this difference equation, uh, xn plus 1 
equals a times xn. Uh, we actually found the analytical solution to that previously. xn is just a to the n times x0. And so what that means is, if I want to find the probability after n steps, I just need to multiply my initial state by, x, uh, by the A matrix a total of n times.